Hi right, guys. It is a gray, gloomy Sunday morning, almost noon, on Sunday, September 10th, 2023, here in paradise in the end times at Bugs in a Jar Farm, waiting for the next line of wicked thunderstorms to come crashing through here, starting in about an hour. So, I guess all of the latest batch of happy little vacation tourists have packed up their bags and gone back to doing whatever all of these young couples do with themselves <laughs> when they leave here where they come from where they go i guess one of these young couples is heading to niagara falls today i think the rain is already starting so uh, i can sit here and catch my breath Look forward to the rest of this gloomy, rainy day and this gloomy, rainy life. What am I? Twelve days away from my 64th birthday. So pretty much one more year till I hit 65, which used to be the retirement age. But uh, more and more clueless morons uh, deciding this is not retirement age. Uh, so I was reading this long article in the mainstream media this morning. You know, one of these planning for your retirement. <laughs> uh, God, mostly financial planning, but, you know, more than that. Uh, just talking about, it was, I'm not going to sit here and read the article. I, I had this rant just recently. So I had a rant recently about uh, this person on medium.com. Sancho, do not bite the bumblebee. You will regret it. Uh, and I was reading this article with this uh, person, uh, freaking out that did not know if two million dollars was going to be enough to retire on and according to this article that i was reading apparently and this is across all generations all the generations i, I mean from baby boomers all the way down to whatever they're called generation zers pretty much one in five people in this survey regarding uh, retirement, uh, about one in five people claim that they need at least $2 million to feel comfortable to retire at age 65. Uh, now, it wasn't clear because I don't think most people understand the difference, what they mean by $2 million. Do they, are they talking about $2 million in liquid assets that could be turned to cash, which used to be called purchasing power? So I'm not even quite sure of the definition of what they mean by $2 million, but one out of five people, and, and, and this is going all the way to 16 to 25-year-olds talking about when they retire, what would that be pretty much 40 to 50 years from now? Uh, you know, looking at age 65, whether they're going to be able to retire if they don't have $2 million. Although, of course, $2 million today will mean, you know, five or six million dollars uh, by the time all of these people retire 
from their careers over the next 40 to 50 years that I'm just thinking, my fucking God, how clueless uh, these goddamn morons are thinking that it's just going to, they're just going to go right on <clears throat> working their daily grind jobs. Um... Uh, just like, you know, it's still Leave It to Beaver. It's, <laughs> I mean, what fucking planet do these clueless fucking morons live on? Any any 25-year-old acting like uh, that they're just going to, you know, just keep going to work, uh, making money for the man, and... So there was that part of the article. Then, of course, the, the corollary to that is, is the just how the vast, vast majority of people, uh, I guess this wasn't part of the questionnaire, uh, you know, thinking whether they need $2 million, $1 million, or whatever, the, the, however the survey was, you know, it was mapped out. I, I'm not sure. I wish they had had a link to the survey because I would have liked to have ta <coughs> <coughs> to have taken it myself. But then talking about how the vast majority of people have no planning whatsoever for their retirement. No planning whatsoever how they're going to reach this hilarious goal of uh, having $2 million or whatever the equivalent is in what would that be uh, <clears throat> for a 25-year-old in, in 2063. <laughs> uh, but, but, but in some ways, the even more depressing part of, of this article uh, was talking about how many people, again, over all generations, have absolutely no intention of retiring when they hit 65 degrees, 65 degrees, 65 years old. That... that <clears throat> Like, what do you mean, stop working? I mean, over 50% of, uh, uh, of people in, uh, across all generations in the survey, you know, saying they had no intention of retiring at 65. And the number one reason was not financial stress. It was 99%, 99% of the people who said they have no intention of retiring at 65 stated <clears throat> keeping their mind active as the reason. So for all intents and purposes, the the reason that uh, the, these clueless fucking morons have no intention of retiring at 65 is to keep their mind active. I don't know if keeping their body active was a choice. Uh, and, you know, I got to say, as someone who's getting ready to hit 64 and who sort of retired in 2008, uh, I, I, I agree with them. Uh, it's, it's to keep your mind active. Uh, and, and I would add body, to, I would add mind and body to it because, uh, I, I mean, it's just, it's just a sad, depressing uh, comment on society that that we base is 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 just everything we base on uh, what we quote do 
for a living. That, that question you hear from people you just meet, and I'm guilty of asking people uh, you know, who come through the Airbnb, what do you do? And, and people know exactly when you hear the answer, when you hear the question, what do you do? What the person is talking about, what is your job? What is the role that you have assigned yourself or what is the role that society has assigned to you? How do you make yourself useful to the rest of us is, is what is the, you know, the undercurrent of that question? That uh, what do you do? And then so I guess if you retire and you don't have a job, you don't have a little cubby hole uh, position uh, in, in society, the answer to the question, what do you do, would be nothing. Because I am retired, I do nothing. I have no value to anybody uh, or, or to this planet. I am just a useless eater. Uh, because I am no longer working. And as I say, I, I, I know exactly what these, you know, what these people are talking about, these 99% of people who say they have no intention of retiring. Uh, it's just... It's called just the very thought of just having to sit here and and what? Uh, if I was not running this vacation rental business, uh, you know, I, I have no fucking clue. What, what I would be doing. And now that we're winding down for the year, uh, you know, here I sit. Here I sit on Sunday morning, sitting here alone uh, with my thumb up my ass, hanging out with my little dog. I have nothing to do today. I have, I have nothing to do today. I have nothing to do tomorrow. Uh... And I'm not one of these people who can turn on this little screen and, and, and just sit there in front of this fucking screen for, I mean, I'm bad enough. I, I probably spend four hours a day uh, in, in, in front of this goddamn little screen. Uh... But, but at some point, you, you got to say enough is enough. But I don't have to go far to find people who apparently have no problem spending uh, virtually all of their waking hours in front of this fucking little screen. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm jealous of people who can do it. Uh... But it's just, it's just not for me. So since uh, there, there's, I have nobody coming in, checking in until Friday. So as far as the Airbnb business, uh, I am done. I have nothing to do until Friday. I mean, I have things to do in, in other parts of my life. But uh, as far as my working life, uh, nothing to do for the next five days, nothing, it, it, it is, as far as my quote business, and then in six weeks I'm going to shut it down, and it won't crank it back up until Memorial Day, and 
know, over half the year, and I've got to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do with myself down there in Florida uh, for six fucking months. Now, you know, I'm going to be working on my little piece of investment property, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I figure, call it, 100 hours Let, let's say I have 100 hours of work to put into that place so 20 days at 5 hours so everything I need to do there uh, if I work 5 hours a day at the end of 20 days that job will be done and just the, the, you know, just the thought of, uh, of just, what the fuck? You know, just the, just, just the absolute pointlessness uh, uh, of it all. Uh, here I am heading into 64, uh, turns of the cosmic screw and the the number one wisdom I have come away with I, I mean with each passing year it's just uh, looking back over my life and just like anybody else's life uh, a, a, a mixed bag uh, you know predominantly just dealing with shit with a few little nuggets of joy thrown in there, uh, which are fewer and fewer and fewer every year. But the, the takeaway from 64 years on this planet is, is, is that my life, uh, just like any other person who sits there and analyzes their life, is the, is the absolute fucking pointlessness of of my existence this it, it, it has been i i have no fucking clue what i'm doing here uh i have no fucking clue why i am sitting here right now uh and w w with each passing year it just gets more and more pointless and and probably the most terrifying aspect of, of, of this entire article uh, was they were talking about how so many clueless morons when they're thinking about their retirement planning for their retirement uh, just have, have never thought about how many years they might live past 65 and so apparently so it, it says so men uh you know the the median death age for men i guess at least in the u.s is now sitting at 84 and women is 87 so 84 years you know 20 20 more fucking years that if I just make it to the median, I, I, I got 20 fucking more years of this bullshit. You know, turning back the clock 20 years to when I was 44 years old and, and, and thinking of doing that again. And uh, then they were saying uh, that you have that men have pretty much right at a one in three chance of, uh, of making it till 90. Uh, so there is a one in three chance that I will live to see the year 2050. And, 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 and you know, 26 years. You know, I, I try to turn back the years in my mind, 26 years. And it just, 
it, and, and, and the very thought, uh, you know, thinking, you know, taking that chunk of time, which pretty much goes back to, you know, the, the year my mother died. I guess that would be 27 years now. But, uh, just thinking of the years and what my life has entailed since my mother died and then <clears throat> putting that forward in, in full knowledge knowing that every year I will physically grow more decrepit, uh, you know, my, my body, uh, every passing year, I will grow weaker and weaker and more and more decrepit, less and less able to uh, do what I need to do to keep this place up and running. Uh, I'm sure I will grow more mentally decrepit uh, I, I have completely abandoned all hope, all hope, uh, of ever having a woman uh, in my life. Uh, I, I will face the prospects uh, of more and more of my ever-diminishing number of friends dying. And uh, checking out on this, of course, I will... Uh, be dealing with the death of Sancho Panza. Uh, I, I have that to uh, the, the very thought of this little dog dying. You know, the, the, the one living thing I have in this life to, you know, that brings any joy uh, in, into my life. Sancho is going to die on me. He's, he's going to grow old and decrepit, and, and I'm going to have to, you know, deal with that, watching him uh, just grow weaker and weaker and have all of these health problems and good fucking God. And uh, I, I, I have that absolute horror to uh, look forward to as I watch my own body decay, my own mind decay. Uh, I, I have nothing to look forward to except a life of loneliness and isolation. Uh, I, I, I see no prospect of, uh, uh, of making any new friends. I have, you know, this, this whole thing this this whole term friends and and I am talking uh, uh, definition of the word friend okay if I defined and I'm talking real life friends as much as I love my little imaginary friends here on YouTube if if I define a friend a friend as someone I actually have a physical encounter with, you know, that I actually spend time in person with, well, okay, once a year, once a year, let's see, how many people... <clears throat> do I physically interact with uh, in an average year if, if it is uh, more than 20 I would be shocked and if you take away my clueless lovable friends from Austin Texas uh, it, it, the, the, the number I can count on two hands, maybe, and, okay, so, all right, let me define it. Now, uh, okay, if, 
if I go to Austin, Texas, which I have no plans of doing in, in the next year now that I rented this place in Florida. So unless I make a trip to Austin, Texas, okay, we're going to define a friend in, 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 in if my friends from Austin visiting me in New York or Florida, I have had two friends from Austin, two, show up here uh, in the year 2023. And so if I don't count me going to Austin, Texas to visit my clueless, lovable friends, my guess is I will have personal interactions with friends one time in a year that I will visit them or they will visit me fewer than 20, fewer than 20. If I were to make it uh, friends, I actually have personal interactions with, uh, well, once every six months because, you know, <clears throat> I'm only in New York half the year. And so <coughs> maybe... Maybe in the state of New York, uh, well, ob well, I have two housemates. Okay, so obviously I see my housemates every day, uh, but if they were not living in the house with me, I, I, I don't know uh, how many times I would see either one of them uh, in my six months in New York. I'm guessing one, two, eight, eight people uh, in, in, in the state of New York uh, that I will actually have a physical interaction with, eight people uh, in, in New York. Uh, and then in Florida, good God, I can think in, in six months in Florida, I can think of uh, one, three people, three people uh, that, that I will physically interact with, which is a lot fewer than it, it was. I, I have a lot fewer friends in Florida today than I did uh, four years ago. And, and I might add that I have fewer friends in New York than I did four years ago. So uh, on the balance, a, you would think after living up here for four years, it would make sense that maybe I would have more friends that I will see uh, at, at least once in six months and then I did. Uh, I, 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 I was interacting physically with more people in the state of New York when I wasn't even living here. I mean, I was living here, but, you know, not living here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I, I, I was having more regular physical interactions with friends in, uh, in, in New York in 2019 than I am now. Uh, and and I, I, I don't see anything on the horizon why that's going to change uh just uh, the 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 few friends that i have in new york are either going to die 
or they're just going to, as friends do, drift away and they're not going to be replaced. Uh, I, I see, you know, the, the, the thought of living and actually seeing 2050, uh, you know, not even counting uh, the collapse of uh, the economy, the collapse of society, the collapse of a planet. Uh, just the, uh, I might actually get to see all of this shit. There, there is a one in three chance that I am going to see this planet in the year 2050. I, I, I have no more desire to be living on this planet in, in, in the year 2050 uh, than I do, you know, to roll around naked in a nest of fire ants. The, the very thought uh, of, uh, of continuing this pointless, worthless existence, you know, just trying to stay in the basically miserable camp without falling into the truly horrible camp. You know, that is going to be the measure of, uh, of, of my life uh, from here on out to the day I die. Uh, my goal in, in my life, my goal uh, is to stay in the basically miserable camp of uh, of humanity and just uh, and not fall into the truly horrible camp you know which obviously with each passing year will mean some physical degradation uh, of of my body that i will develop some sort of of physical malady that uh, will, will, will keep me from, uh, you know, being able to do whatever that I need or want to do. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I see these people uh, you know, going from the basically miserable to the truly horrible. So I guess my, my main gratitude uh, in my life right now is that I am only basically miserable and not truly horrible. That I, I am so happy to be basically miserable and not truly horrible. Uh, so I guess uh, I, I, I guess I'm doing something right in my pointless, worthless, lonely existence uh, on this little rock spinning through uh, space until the fucking sun blows up. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. And that is uh, what I'm up to today. Uh, imagining my future in hell. And as I say, this is a whine. In case you guys have not noticed, this is a whine. This is not a rant. The rant is about, you know, what is going on uh, outside of my teeny weeny little worthless piece of shit life. Uh, just, just what, what I have a one in three chance uh, uh, of witnessing uh, if, if I can stay out of the truly horrible camp 
Uh, good fucking God. I'll take basically miserable, I guess. But anyway, Sancho Panza says, dude, it's raining. So I'm going to go take cover from the oncoming thunderstorm and figure out what the fuck, what the fuck I'm doing with my day and my life. I guess we're going to, uh, we're going to go barbecue some of our f factory farmed fellow earthlings over the fossil fuel powered grill. Well, we still can, aren't we, little dog? So I'm off to eat a fellow earthling. What do you think, Sancho? Are you ready to eat a fellow earthling? And get out of the damn rain. You need to get a bug. Get the bug. Let's go eat a fellow earthling while we both still can. Get out there and uh, stay out of that truly horrible camp while you still can. Bye, guys.